Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It has been a really long time. It's <laughs> probably been close to a year since the last time I made any sort of video, which most of them were tutorials, but nowadays, honestly, they might be kind of like this, just like sit down videos, or if you guys give me other things you wanna know about or want me to tell you about, I guess I could do a video. Um, a lot of people told me to do a video about how I became a makeup artist and how I began my freelance career, like where I found the passion to do this. So, here it is. I thought I would kind of tell you guys where it came from. When I started like really enjoying doing, I wouldn't even say just makeup, like the beauty stuff, hair and makeup, and then how it transpired into a career. So if you would like to, she wants to tell you about it too, but if you would like to see kind of about that story and where all this came from, how I'm doing this, then please keep watching. Okay, so to begin the video, we have to address one thing, this little thing right here. So. I haven't formally introduced anybody. Oh, say hi. You're so pretty. This is Charney Lou. <laughs> and um, she clearly already loves the camera like her mom, so <laughs> perfect. Okay, so let's kind of backtrack to, I don't know, maybe like middle school. How did I find my passion? Like how did I know this thing I wanted to do? I, it took a while. I, when I was younger, like when I was really, really young, like middle school, I think I really wanted to become like a psychologist. And I think it's because my dad, that's what his degree was in. And so I wanted to be just like him. Um, and I also thought I could like solve everyone's problems. <laughs> Joke's on me that I still try to do the same thing. But um, at that time, I thought just like, I would love to, I don't know why, I thought like I wanted my own private practice. And I wanted to like sit there and literally just like help everyone with all their issues and I still feel like I am a psychologist sometimes in my own world. I just need to, I need to start getting paid for it at this rate. But yeah, so that is what I thought I wanted to do when I was like really little. And then as I got into high school, hold on, when I was in middle school also, I'll have, if I can find some pictures, I know I have one, but I'll have to look for some more of me doing my, my old stepmom, her hair. So not only did I do her hair, she literally let me highlight her hair and cut her hair. And I was like 11. So I don't really think that's a good thing, but she must have really trusted me. and I must have really done a good job. So that was probably middle school. And then going into high school, I feel like, I'm trying to think. Like honestly, high school feels so long ago, but I'm trying to remember really. She's spitting up everywhere, so great. Once high school came around, I know that I did a lot of people's makeup. So probably, I remember for sure remember senior year, I didn't even go to my senior prom because I was so busy doing everybody's makeup that I was like literally running around like a crazy person. Was it junior or senior year? What, I think it was junior year. Yeah, I was running around trying to do everybody's makeup and then as I was doing that, I realized like holy shit, I probably should go. So what I did was I like hurried and grabbed the dress on Okay, sorry, we had, to, we had to make sure little babe was okay. But um, I don't know where I was. Let's see, talking about high school. Oh, so senior prom. I didn't go to my senior prom. And that was like slightly for the fact that my boyfriend at the time was older. But the other, <laughs> he couldn't go. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. But besides that, um, I was busy doing makeup all day long. I did everybody's makeup for prom. Um, I want to say like maybe like two or three girls, but at the time I was not fast, so it took me a really long time. And then I think I like hurried and borrowed somebody's dress. I thought if I remember correctly, I like borrowed somebody's dress and then just went and took pictures with everybody and then went home. Okay, hold on. So as I get her to sleep, we'll keep going in the story. So, um, I know there's gonna be so many interruptions, but that's okay. So. Uh, didn't go to high school prom and really didn't even care because I just felt so good. A lot of people really liked their makeup. Looking back now, I'm sorry, you guys. It was probably horrible what I did on you, like in high school, not looking at it, but I was just starting and being creative. Um, so after high school, I realized I wanted to pursue going to cosmetology school. I decided to go to Douglas Shea Aveda Institute in East Lansing went for I guess my cosmetology license I maybe should have gone for esthetology yeah like become an esthetician um, I didn't realize 
you don't learn, not that I need to learn, but I didn't learn much from cosmetology school for makeup. Um, they, they touched on it like a tiny bit, but for me, in my personal opinion, Aveda makeup wasn't anything, it wasn't something you can use for, you know, any creativity. Um, you couldn't really build off of it. Um, that's all I'll say about Aveda, but, um, yeah, so I did that. That's not the story I'm going down, but went to cosmetology school and realized that maybe, like, I should have done, you know, esteology. Is that, am I saying that correctly? It sounds really strange. Just either way, to become an esthetician. Um, after that, while I was in, I guess it, like, becoming, oh my god. While I was in cos school, I was working at Victoria's Secret, um, just trying to get by, and while I was working there, I was just kind of doing freelance, like, I didn't have any time, like, when I was doing cos school, I was work. I was in the beginning doing nights, so I was doing, like, four, I think it's, like, 4.30 to 10, and I'd work at Victoria's Secret at, like, 6 a.m. until, like, noon, and then I would, like, nanny or babysit in the middle, and then do that, so if anything, I was doing weekends, I would, like, do some kind of freelance, and then... Um, I switched to days for school. So once I did that, it's longer days, but you get done in a shorter amount of time. And then I realized that, you know, just like wasn't, the hair wasn't the route that I wanted to go down. So yeah, I decided like salon life wasn't it. It wasn't for me. Um, I, re I, you know, I don't know. I realized a lot. It was a really, I've heard this from other people who went to cosmetology school. It's like definitely a transitional period in your life. I think, especially when you're so young, um, I don't think people really give enough credit to people who go to either like cosmetology school, like a, um, what's the term? Like a vocational school. I think it's like if you don't go to college or you don't get like your four year degree, um, it's kind of like your way out. I think a lot of people have a bad misjudgment on that. Um, I went because it was something I really wanted to do. Uh, you know, it wasn't just because I had nothing else to do or I couldn't get into another school. I'd fast forward, at that point I was 18, um, and then I got a job at Sephora. So, I'm not going to go into detail about Sephora or like not because I, it's a bad place, but I'm not going to go into like how I got my job or what that doesn't matter. Um, basically, long story short, I started working at Sephora, became a certified artist there. Um, it was amazing. I really don't have anything bad to say about working at Sephora. It was a great experience. Um, excuse me. I... I, you know, you're, you get over retail. I've, at one point, you know, I'd done like Victoria's Secret, I'd done retail, or I'm sorry, <laughs> I'd done Victoria's Secret, I'd done Sephora, meaning I'd done retail enough. Um, it's crazy the reason why I had to quit in the first place. This is like, I always tell people this story and they're always like, you're kidding, right? Um, I got pink eye really bad. So I had gotten pink eye in one eye. I'll never forget this, you guys. It literally was traumatic. It changed my whole life, I swear. I got, I know it sounds so cr and dramatic, but it did. I got pink eye in one eye. Um, and then when I got it, like, I don't know if, like, on top of getting it, like, I touched the other eye I got in the second. Oh, speaking of eyes, I just poked her in the eye. Um, I'd gotten it in my left eye. So, left, I got in both eyes, whatever. Then, on top of that, so that, you know, takes a long time. And, on you know, at my job, I was touching people's faces. So, couldn't go to work. On top of that, I got an infection of underneath, like my, like the eyelid itself in both eyes. So there was a term for it. But either way, I was like out of work for, I want to say close to like two, almost two months. So it like, and it damaged like my cornea. I have like scar tissue. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. My eyesight is like messed up. Let's just put it that way. Um, so I ended up, that was a reason why I had to stop working at Sephora only because if I'm being like completely honest, I didn't have enough FMLA. I didn't have enough sick time. Um, I couldn't, you know, they, I mean, they can't pay me for time. I'm not there. So I just couldn't do it anymore. So, but nothing but respect for Sephora. Um, I just, it's retail's hard. It's really hard. And I'm not the kind of person, like I don't work off of like sales. So I feel like a lot of like nowadays, a lot of things are, I'm not saying Sephora, I'm in general, just beauty in general a lot of it is like based off sales so it's all about selling yourself and selling a product and like a beta like selling 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 um i get that it's not me it's not who i am it's not my personality in the sense that um i wouldn't say i don't like being told what to do probably if someone's watching this that knows me they're probably like that is exactly what it is it's not it's not just that um especially when it comes to products like if there's a like if there's a drugstore product that's a lot cheaper i'm gonna tell you instead of the YSL or the extremely expensive product. That's who I am. I'm not going to sit here and, like, I don't get paid for Even if I was one, I don't think that would ever happen. But if even if I was getting paid to, like, 
use a product. So I'm gonna be realistic with you. It's just who I am. I don't know. I can't lie to you. That's why I hate when there's a bunch of like BS all over like Instagram and YouTube about like products and they shove it down your throat. Um, I get like messages all the time. People are like, you should try this or try this or try unique. And try. I'm not against it and I get it. Everyone has to do their hustle. Everyone has to sell stuff. It's just not me. Um, so sorry for the rant. That's not a part of the video. Sorry. Okay. So, um, back on topic. So on, you know, finished Sephora, I had gotten my certification there, um, realized like slowly, like while I was working at Sephora that I was picking up a lot more clients as well. And you know, you can, when you're at Sephora, you can have clientele, but you can't technically like, take clientele from Sephora. Not that I was, but I was realizing that a lot of my clientele was getting bigger and bigger. Um, and by no means am I sounding cocky and just being realistic you know like my clientele was getting larger and you know you can't take off Saturdays when you're working at Sephora under you know understandably you know it's really busy um and they need you there but I you know was getting more clients and at that time I was making more money doing freelance so clients started building and I kind of like wondered at that point like could I make this a full-time career the only tough part is is that you you don't have like a lot of weddings in the winter so um and i'm actually just now starting to get more clients in the fall it's crazy next year in 2019 i'm already i'm getting booked up more for the fall than i am the summer which is it's just weird how like every year is so different okay so moving forward um i wanted to go into more of i would say like in the last couple of years so we talked about sephora a little bit um and how i became a certified artist and how um, I think I really grew my artistry skills there. Um, it was really nice to be able to play with a lot of different kind of makeup. Besides, like we talked about the selling aspect of it, it was really great. And I think I worked with a lot of great girls who also enjoyed makeup. I think that's one thing I truly miss about working there was being around and being influenced by other people who enjoyed the beauty industry. I went from that to working in HR for like a day job after that. And it was pretty difficult, um... I don't explain it to when you're around people who have the same passion that you do there were definitely people there who were just working retail but there are some really and there still are some really really talented ladies who work at sephora and you can just tell that they all have so much great talent so anyways it, it was definitely a great experience and i learned so much so um back to moving forward um my just my career started booming i kind of realized how I wanted to focus more on my career. I wanted to take freelance a little more seriously. I started getting my clientele up. Um, like I was saying, in the winter time, it was a lot more difficult. My camera is kind of, it's a little crooked here. Maybe a little slanted, maybe. Um, winter does get a little bit hard. I'm trying to think of like, well, there, I had one other question, what was it? That so although I won't, there's not really much I can say about like where it's gone like previously in the sense that like there's no end to this. I'll kind of go into other questions that I got about my freelance career when people like ask me um, to make a video about this. So one question was if you were like someone who really likes makeup and you want to get started in freelance, how did you start um, practicing? I guess I would say my biggest thing was like practice. I practice on anybody I can get my hands on. I still practice, whether it's myself. Uh, well, I take that back. I think a lot of my practice came from working at Sephora. So when you're a certified artist, you kind of just get handed clients all the time. You didn't get the choice to say like, no, I don't really like their face shape, or no, I don't think contouring would look really good on them. Like you just get handed the clients. You don't get tipped or you don't get like paid an extra amount to do a makeover. So I think it really did force me to have to learn different face shapes and what would look good on certain eye colors, um, which I think I had the benefit of. So I do think if you were to work at Sephora, I don't, yeah, Ulta doesn't have those services, just Sephora. Um, it is a really good benefit. So practicing will be a really good tip. Um, just kind of investigating into maybe different classes you can take. Getting your name out there, I think is huge. I, you know, I do always say, Working in this industry is great. I am just like on the internet, just speaking out my name and my business. And it is great and I love doing it and I wouldn't change doing it for anything. But I will say it can get kind of exhausting because you are constantly putting yourself out there for the world to see. Now again, you don't have to do that. I mean, I make that choice. But, you know, I do want to get clients and eventually i don't know if i see myself forever doing freelance in just bridal i would like to do more editorial or you know photo shoots 
I could see myself down that route. I do think it's a lot different than bridal work. Um, I have done a couple photo shoots in the past and the models that are going to the photo shoots and it's been great. Um, I would like to venture off and do more work. So I think in the future I would like to take more classes. Um, but yeah, I guess this wasn't like really informational. I want to just kind of make this short video or if it is, if it even, if it even is short and kind of get myself back on camera and bring up like a new topic because I feel like all my videos in the past were tutorials um so yeah if I hope this answered any questions for you if it didn't I don't know I guess ask me on Instagram um if you don't follow me on Instagram and you're on from Facebook it's makeup by Ariel as my makeup Instagram and my regular one it's just my first and last name so ask me whatever questions and let me know some new video suggestions because I think I might be venturing out of just makeup and doing more lifestyle as well and like mommy videos so yeah I am glad to be on YouTube maybe she can say a little goodbye let's see say goodbye everybody oh she's stretching guys say bye bye you say bye you say bye <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. And yeah, subscribe. Um, yeah, I mean, YouTube's just fun. I don't really need, it doesn't even matter if I'm like talking to zero people. I just feel like it's fun. And a lot of people have been saying vlogging. So maybe I'll start vlogging. Maybe we'll just start vlogging. I don't really do much. So if you really want to see vlogs, sure. But like, we literally just sit here all day and I clean. So if you want to see me clean, maybe I can do a cleaning video. I don't know. But yeah. Thank you again for watching and thanks for welcoming me back on YouTube. I'll see you guys next time and do not forget to subscribe. Bye.